Before Jesus calls his first disciples, he proclaims a message that becomes known as the gospel, or good news from God. God is ready to rule our lives. Those who realize this will respond with repentance and faith. A reading from Mark chapter 1. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of the Lord. Be Please be seated. Sisters and brothers in faith, grace to you and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The last time I saw Louis, um, I think I was about six years old. I might have been seven or eight, but I was pretty young, six, seven, eight years old. But I still remember this guy, Louis. Um, Louis was one of the oldest people I had ever seen. He was even older than my parents, and they were almost 30. I mean, they were ancient. <laughs> Louis died about 30 years ago now, so I'm guessing he must have been in his late 50s or early 60s when I knew him, so he was about my age, so pretty ancient. <laughs> Louis was a big man. Whenever we went on the boat, the boat would kind of lean his way, um, so he was like me that way too, I guess, you know. <laughs> and Louis was, how do I talk? His face was kind of crusty and weathered, looked like cracked leather. You've seen people like that, you know? Um, he'd spent, it seemed, looked like he had left, had spent his whole life outdoors. And he was this loud and obnoxious man. Um, I found out later he was a recovering alcoholic, but he had this big barroom voice. And he had this laugh that you could hear all the way across the lake. Anyway, summer weekends, um, my, my family would go up to this cabin, Sandy and Don's cabin, we called it. Um, Sandy and Don were my parents' friends from high school. We'd go up to their cabin on Goodrich Lake, about a half mile or a half an hour north of here, up by Cross Lake. Um, and we would spend the weekend swimming and fishing and doing all sorts of things that you'd do at the cabin. And Louis was Sandy's father. And I always loved the weekends when Louis came. Because, you know, I was Louis's fishing buddy. <laughs> We'd get there late Friday night. Um, and then at six in the morning, Louis would, would get up and he'd start, you know, walking around the cabin. It was just a tiny little place. We were all sleeping on the floor. But he would, say, he would start talking loudly at six in the morning. Louis's up, so everybody's up. <laughs> Where's my breakfast? <laughs> and my parents never really appreciated that. I'm not, I'm not sure why. But to me, it meant we're going fishing. It was great. And then Louis would put his hand to his ear and he pretended to hear something. And he would say to me, can you hear him? Can you hear the fish calling, Mike? And I'd say, I can hear him. Let's get out there. And so Louie and I would run down to the boat with all of our gear and with our bait, and we would go fishing. My parents, I imagine, just went back to bed. <laughs> and Louie was unique because Louie he knew where the fish were, and he knew how to catch them. And he was a really valuable guy to know. And so we would come in about an hour later, and Louis would let me carry the stringer all the way up to the cabin like a Super Bowl trophy. Uh -huh. It was always full of fish. And then he'd throw it into the sink and for other people to clean, and then we'd go out and catch some more. <laughs> My parents never seemed to appreciate that so much either. <laughs> I was Louis's fishing buddy, and I would jump up and I would follow him anywhere if he said so, because he knew where the fish were, and he knew how to catch them. Our Lord is kind of like Louis, isn't he? Maybe he's not so crusty and obnoxious, but he's kind of like him. Walking by the Sea of Galilee, he calls for these guys to follow him. It's time to go fishing for people. And he makes people like us, his fishing buddies. I mean, what a compliment. Can you imagine any more of a compliment than that? Follow me, 
and I will make you fish for people. And it's not ambiguous at all. It's more of a command. It's, it's a command from our Lord to his followers. And there's no questions asked by these guys about pay or benefits, just a simple word of, of authority from the great I am who can say things like that. Follow me. And our lesson says the fishermen left their nets. And what does that mean? They quit their jobs. I mean, who would do that? They quit their jobs to follow this guy. Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. It's also a word of complete grace, isn't it? A compliment far beyond anything we could ever deserve from our Lord. I mean, why should our Lord send broken people like us to speak a word in his name? Why would he ever do that? And yet, he does. I don't know about you, but more often than not, I'm kind of an obstacle to our Lord's grace. Huh. I heard this statistic. You've probably heard it too. It's been out in the Lutheran circles for a while. But it said, the statistic is 80% of the people who join an ELCA church join be because a friend invited them. 80%. That's 8 out of 10. That's pretty good. And that's kind of sad for people like me because it's not because of the pastor. In fact, usually what the, peop the reason people give for leaving a church is the pastor. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the choir. It's not the band. As good as those things are, it's being invited by a friend. And that's how they join. Eight out of ten. That's really great news for fishers. The trouble is, in the ELCA, Lutherans invite a friend on average once every 22 years. <laughs> and so our shyness, our shyness becomes an obstacle to our Lord's grace. I'm reminded of a more um, insidious obstacle, too, in Jonah, the reading from Jonah that we heard. There are some people we would really rather not have God help, aren't there? Can you think of some people like that? God called Jonah to go east to Nineveh, and so Jonah promptly got up and went west in a boat. <laughs> and then there's that little incident in the belly of a fish, and Jonah learned there that it's better, it's better to be a fishing buddy than fish bait. So Jonah went to Nineveh. He went to Nineveh reluctantly, under protest, and he preached the worst sermon that he could think of, eight words, Eight words, did you see it? It's only five words in Hebrew. Repent, God's going to destroy the city in 40 days. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> he was trying to fail. He was doing his very best to fail. He hated those Ninevites. You know why he hated them? Those Ninevites were his enemies. They had destroyed Israel just not too long ago. They were tormenting his country. I mean, they, he loved Ninevites like we love ISIS. And he wanted God to destroy them. There'd be nothing better than for God to take them out. But those darn Ninevites, they repented. And you know, just like he thought, this stupid, merciful God, he had mercy. <laughs> and he spared the city. And at the end of the story, God, or J Jonah goes up on the mountain overlooking the city, and he sits there and pouts for like days. <laughs> and he pouts about this. Oh, you stupid thing, why did I get mixed up with this? And it ends with a question, um, God asking no Jonah a question. Jonah, you know, look at all those people in that city. Shouldn't I, shouldn't I care about all those people in that city? And we never hear Jonah's answer to that question. And it reminds me that forgiveness always sounds like a great idea until you get specific about it. <laughs> and you talk about forgiving that person or this group over here, right? Forgiveness is a great idea. It's really hard when you mean someone sp specific. What do you mean you want to forgive Ninevites? What do you mean you want to forgive tax collectors and prostitutes? What do you mean you want to forgive ISIS or immigrants or Obama or Trump or anybody else you could name? What do you mean you want to forgive my ex? <laughs> But if our Lord is going to so love the world, there is no other way 
and to forgive the people that we find in this world, particular people like you and me who do not deserve it. And like all, all those other people out there who also do not deserve it. There's no other way to so love the world other than to love the actual people who are in it, right? So, you and I, we're called to be fishing buddies to Jesus. <laughs> it's a great compliment for the likes of us. And it's more than a compliment. Just like fishing for most people, it's a blast. I mean, what could be more fun than doing that? What's more fun than seeing the lights go on for somebody when they hear about Jesus for the very first time and it changes their whole life? When they hear that word of grace, and they go, oh my God, are you talking about me? Or they come to the table and they taste this forgiveness and they, they think, oh my Lord, for me? You're talking about me? And they get up and they give testimony to this faith that was born in them. What could be better? What could be better than that? What a blast. And what a responsibility. Because that means you and I are the hands and the feet and the mouth of Jesus. We may be the only Jesus that people ever meet. And that's a sobering thought when I think of me next, sitting next to Jesus. And if it were not for the promise from the great I am who says, I will make you fish for people, I would never dare to do this, would you? But our Lord has promised. Our Lord chose you to do this fishing, to speak this word of grace to everybody you meet. And our Lord has promised to work through those things that you do. What a gift. In other words, our Lord knows where the fish are, <laughs> and our Lord knows how to catch them. And that's good news, and it's good enough for me. Can you hear him calling? Can you hear him? They're out there. Let's go fishing.